Hello and welcome back to this next video of the Canix video series. In the last video we got to know to the physical infrastructure of a Canix network and now in this video we will take a look at the digital infrastructure of a Canix network. So after the intro we will see what a physical address is and why we need it. In order to be able to program a KNX device, the device needs its own address. You can compare it to a postal address or like an IP address to which you send your messages to. This address depends on the line and the area the device is assigned to. So similar to the postal code and the street name. And the last part of the physical address is the device number. So just like a house number. Now this may now sound more complicated than it really is because you can't really much do anything wrong here because the EDS is already assigning an address as soon as you put a device into your project. You can later on manipulate the address but you really can't do anything wrong here. But how is this address now set up? And this is how a physical address looks like. The physical address always consists of three digits, each separated by a dot from each other. And this is important because later on we'll get to know to another address which also has three digits but are separated by slashes from each other. The first two parts of the physical address are automatically assigned by the area and the line. So the first digit always indicates the area the device sits in the second digit the line of the area where the device sits in and the last digit can be set freely because this is the device ID which gets already set by the EDS as soon as you import the device into your project but you can later on change it freely. Now the first address you see here is the 1370 so that means that the device sits in the area with the number 1 in the line three of the area one and it has the device ID 70. Now this doesn't mean that it is the 17th device of this line. It simply means that this device has this number because you can freely assign this number. The second address is the 2.5.32. Now the same thing, the device sits in the area with the number two within the line five of area number two and the device has the ID 32. Again, it doesn't mean that it is the 32nd device of the line, but it just means it has the number 32. So now that's enough theory, therefore let's take a look in the EDS6 to see how we use such a physical address in practice. I am here in the EDS6 in a little practice project. I just created the project, nothing more. And I will now switch to the topology view. No worries. We'll take a closer look at the ED6 in a later video. Now let's focus to the topology. As you can see, the ED6 already created an IP area as well as a twisted pair line within this area. Remember, we can have up to 15 lines below such an area. So I can now create a line in this area. So I simply mark it, click on add line, now click line test, I will name it, and here we can set up the medium type, I will leave it to twisted pair, and now you can see I have a second line with the name line test, and I can assign it up to the number 15, if I want to assign 60 you can see this doesn't work, because we can ha only have up to 15 lines below an area. I will quickly delete it, and here you can already see our backbone, this is marked here, topology backbone, which is also set to the medium type IP, as you can see here. And below this backbone, I can also create multiple areas. So there I will create an IP area, area test. And here you can see now a second area, which I have just created. And also here I can give up to the number 15. If I want to do more, you will see it doesn't work. 
So that's that. Now I want to add a device to our twisted pair line so that we can see how it gets its physical address. Therefore I open up the catalogs page and there I will search for KNX association and here you can see all the devices we have from KNX Virtual. So the program that we will use to simulate KNX devices. I will simply drag and drop such a switching actuator into the twisted pair line. And now you can see the device already got its address. It got the address 1.1.1. Well, this makes sense. It sits in area with the number one, line number one within the area, and it got the first free address, which is the number one. Now I can freely assign the last address here. I can go up here and set up up to the address 255, as well as addresses below. Now if I move it up to the area, I first of all have to change the medium type so I can add it to it because the actuator is twisted pair. So I need to set up the area as twisted pair. I will drag and drop it into the area. And now you can see it got the address 1.0.1, .1, which means it is associated to the area with the number one, but isn't associated to the line, just to the area line itself. And therefore it got the address zero. Now another thing that you should note is when we get the address 0 here. So 1.0.0. .0. This address is reserved for line couplers. So as soon as I import such a twisted pair line coupler into our line, you can see it gets the address 1.1.0. .1 so the 0 always indicates that it is a coupler or an IP router. So if I choose such an IPTP router and put it into the twisted pair area, well then it should get the address 1.0.0 .0, as you can see. So 110 means it is a router or a coupler which routes messages from the line 1.1 into the area and now in this case 1.00 means it is a coupler or router which routes telegrams from the area into our backbone. So that's that for this video. Quickly summarize, in KNX, in order to program a device and to send messages to it, we need the physical address. The physical address consists of three digits, each separated by a point. And the first digit is associated to the area the device sits in, the second digit to the line the device sits in, and the last digit is the device ID which we can freely assign. In the EDS, the physical address gets assigned automatically and we can then later on change it. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. In the next video, we will take a look at the so-called group objects. So see you there.